months. We're joined now by Mohammed Abu Asaka. He's with the UN's Refugee Agency and is the spokesman for the UNHCR in the Gulf region. Thank you very much for taking the time to join us. It's such distressing pictures that we're seeing in Paul's report and many others before it. Why are we still seeing dead children washing up on Europe's shores? Thanks, Laura. It's very sad to see these images. For refugees, stranded people need help and support. There are so many reasons that we still keep seeing these photos and images because, number one, the, the conflict inside Syria has been going for over four years without any vision for any political solution anytime soon. And those people lost hope in any solution. Mm -hmm. And second of all, there is a lack of funding. There is a very huge shortage of funding. UNHCR, and along with international organizations, uh, launched an appeal last December asking for humanitarian support for refugees and neighboring countries for one year. What we received so far is just above 40 percent of what we asked for and there is like more than half the services supposed to be delivered to the refugees are not there so a lack of funding a lack of political will follows very closely from that why have we not had much more of a coordinated response i mean this crisis really came to everybody's attention months ago we believe that the international community failed to provide a political solution for the ongoing conflict inside Syria. And this will lift people behind. We talk about 7.6 million intern displaced people inside Syria and with over 4 million refugees in the neighboring countries. Those countries have been very generous in hosting refugees for over the four years. And now what we're expecting from those people in the lack of hope and support just to find an opportunity for life and dignity somewhere else. This is why they have gave their life in the hands of smugglers who don't have any mercy in trading their suffering in dangerous and risky routes in the, in the Mediterranean. Of In this year, 2015 alone, we witnessed over 3,000 people, either dead or missing, reaching out to Europe. We're talking about people fleeing conflict situations, refugees, women, pregnant women, kids, children. Those people are a human being at the end of the day, and they are entitled for life and dignity. If we're looking at the numbers, more than 4 million refugees. We've seen the number of these people in Syria's neighboring countries putting huge strains on their resources, not getting the funds that they need. You have to ask why the GCC countries are not doing more. We're talking about Qatar, we're talking about Saudi Arabia. Why have they not officially resettled a single refugee? The GCC country has been very generous providing uh, financial support to the Syria situation alone. The GCC countries uh, provided $1.2 billion mm. to the Syria situation alone. The current situation of the Syria, humanitarian situation, is an international humanitarian emergency that requires a response from all countries all over the world. It's not a responsibility for one region or one country. All countries in the world, international support, a massive, unprecedented support is needed to respond to this Catastrophe. Okay, but as, as you say, they have been very generous. I think Qatar's uh, donated some $1.6 billion to Syrian refugees. But as we're seeing, these people don't want to spend their lives in camps. They want to restart their lives, which is partly why they're traveling to Europe. Why can't they restart their lives in a GCC country which has plenty of resources to offer them? Why are they not re-evaluating their, their policies towards the refugees? As a, camps is the last resort that UNHCR is looking for a refugee. Refugees, as I mentioned, they are a human being. They used to live a dignified life and they used to live a normal life. And we want to see refugees living in the urban setting. And it's not only the responsibility of the neighboring countries. They have been very generous and then under the concern of the economic and social problems, all countries all over the world are invited to provide support mm. and to get in collective effort to respond to this emergency situation. We have to press this issue, though, because we're not seeing the GCC countries taking in the refugees and doing their bit. We point a lot of fingers at Europe, but we're not seeing anyone here actually taking people in. And they do have the space and they have the resources and the apartments. Why not when these countries are very involved in the Syria crisis? Well, we have to remember that European countries are signatory of 1951 convention and yes. they have legal and ethical obligation yes. to provide access and to support and to protect refugees and asylum seekers. And we're talking about countries not signatory of 1951 convention. This is not even a justification for not going, giving support to refugees and asylum seekers. As I mentioned, and this is the call of UNHCR, that all countries all over the world, especially industrialized countries, are invited to join forces to respond to this emergency without a collective response. 
we will not be able to respond to the actual needs. We're talking about life-saving needs for refugees who are left behind. We're talking about the fifth winter is visiting mm. the region. We're mm. talking about countries that facing a freezing weather and temperature goes below zero temperature degree and people are stranded with very little support. UN HCR and international organizations alone cannot respond without a collective international efforts to the needs of, of people in need. So much more does need to be done, doesn't it? Uh, Mohammed Abu Asaka, thank you very much for taking the time to join us here in the studio. Thank you.